So in today's video, I'm gonna cover the number one mistake I see landlords make. And this often hurts their property's performance and can cost them thousands of dollars in cash flow. And I'm not just talking about newbie landlords, I'm talking about experienced landlords as well. Now we're gonna break down this mistake by focusing on what every single landlord needs to do with all their rental properties. And that's an annual review of should I keep the property? Should I refinance the property or should I sell the property and move the capital elsewhere? So who am I? My name is Chris Lopez and I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur here in Denver, Colorado. Now I've helped hundreds of my clients here locally figure out what to do with their properties and their rental portfolio. Many of them look at me as their real estate financial advisor, which is a huge compliment. Now exactly the same thing I talk with my clients about on what to do with their properties, We'll be doing that in today's video. All right, so let's jump into the property details. So this is a single family residence. It has four bedrooms and one bathroom. Now this investor bought the property in October, 2010 for $89,000. Man, we don't see those prices anymore, but today it's currently worth about $400,000. What I wanna show you on this property is he actually has a loan balance about $245,000 now. Well, how does he have a loan balance higher than what he paid for? it? Well, he bought this almost 15 years ago and he's done a couple of cash out refinances to pull the money out and then go reinvest into other rental properties. So he tried and true strategy for building your net worth. All right, so let's jump into the current performance of the rental property. Now, many investors buy a rental property and they stay anchored to their 2010 prices or when they bought the property. That's not the way to go about it. So my favorite metric for measuring the current performance of a rental property is return on equity or ROE. Now this property is generating about a 10% return on equity. And the way we calculate that is by taking the four ways you make money, appreciation, debt pay down, cash flow, and depreciation tax benefits. And we estimate how much we make over the next 12 months or one year. And we divide that over your equity in the property. So 15,600, divided by $155,000 is about a 10% return on equity. I have some very simplistic guidelines as I look at properties. If it's below a 10% return equity, that's often a red light to me, meaning, hey, it's probably time to sell that property and move the equity elsewhere. If it's between a 10 and 15% return equity, that's a yellow light, meaning, hey, you're in between, let's dive in the numbers more, if it's a 15% or greater return equity, that's usually a green light for me and I'm happy as an investor. So for this rental property, we are just above a 10%. So we're in that yellow light area. So we have to dig in the numbers and see what options we have and what the best use of the property is. Now, before we dive into more numbers on here, I need to tell you about the tool that I'm using to analyze it. This video is sponsored by Property Llama Software. Now, this is software I help co-create. Why? Because I need a better way, a better tool to go out there and analyze rental properties. So beyond getting current numbers of performance, the powerhouse is we can run scenarios of what if I did a cash out refi? What if I did a 1031 exchange? And the software can model it for you and give you side by side comparisons to help you understand, hey, if I did this, here's how the numbers look today and we can forecast it out for years to come. So go to propertylama.com slash BP to go create your free account. So you can upload your own properties, get a free analysis, and see what potential you have in your portfolio. So let's get back to analyzing this rental property. Now, a really common question I get is, Chris, why is the cash on cash return blank? Well, that's because the investor bought the property over 10 years ago and pulled all their cash back out. So they have none of their original investment in the property. So since they have no cash in the property, it can't calculate the cash on cash return. And that's another reason I think the return on equity is a superior way to go out there and measure how it's performing. Now, the last number I wanna focus on here for this video is the cap rate. Now, cap rate is your net operating income divided by the current value. So it helps us understand how the property is currently performing based on today's numbers and today's performance. So it's showing about a 3.7% cap rate, uh, which if you guys don't know cap rates, don't worry about the details, just understand the higher it is, the better and a 3.7 cap rate, no one's buying a 3.7 cap rate today. What happened? This investor got massive market appreciation, so the value has gone up, 
but the rents have not kept pace. All right, now that we got the background and the current performance out of the way, let's jump into our three scenarios of keep it, refi, or sell it. So we'll start with the keep it. Now, a quick pro tip on here is before you analyze this, make sure you have clarity on what your goals are. You need to know where you wanna go financially, so that way you can make sure your properties and your portfolio are working towards that goal. So get your goal clarity first. So with the keep it scenario, the first question I always like to ask myself, my clients is, what is the strategy of this property? And is this the best strategy of the rental property? Now we all know there's Airbnbs, there's medium term rentals, there's room by room rentals. So much has changed that you can do other than a long term rental. Remember, every single rental property is a mini business and you have it working in the right strategy. Now, based on the location, the laws and a bunch of other factors, keeping this as a long-term rental is the best strategy. It doesn't work out for room by room for the limited number of bathrooms and the location is not ideal for short-term or medium-term rentals. So now that we have alignment on strategy, let's jump into the operating expenses of the property. So I'm just gonna follow this line item by line item, the vacancy. We have the vacancy at 5%, which fits the market this investor is in. Property taxes, he's paying about $190 a month. Now I wanna make sure everyone goes in there and actually gets their updated property taxes in the software. Because between all the market appreciation since the low interest rate days, a lot of people have their old property taxes in the system. So make sure you have up to date for taxes today and also insurance. Has anyone else felt the insurance pain? Yeah, I have too. So taxes, insurance is in here and then property management. Now this investor is running a 12% property management fee. Yes, the PM charges about 10%, but once you take into consideration some lease up fees and marketing fees, it actually rounds up a couple more points. So he has 12% in here. Now, even if you are self-managing your rental property, I highly recommend you put an expense on here because if you can't manage the property, someone else has to. Now this property has no HOA, and then for our maintenance and CapEx, we are running about a 10% annual maintenance and CapEx. And since it's a single family rental, utilities are zero. So total expenses are about $911, bring our net operating income to $1,230, subtract out our loan payment, and this property is cash flowing about $108 a month. So here's a fun metric I like to look at with cash flow as well. Come over here and see what your percent cash flow over equity is. This is making a 0.8% cash flow on equity. Hmm, how does that make you feel for joining lots of cash flow? All right, now the last area we really need to focus on is the monthly rent. Now, as I talked about in the opening of the video, I'm gonna highlight the number one mistake I see from analyzing hundreds of rental properties. It is having under market rent. Now there's two common reasons this happened. One is we've had such huge rent increases, you know, here in Denver and many other markets that by the time your lease came up for renewal, you were often already 50 or $100 below the market rent. The other factor is, is there's just a lot of, I didn't mean this in a polite way, lazy landlords. You have a good tenant in there, you don't raise your rents, things are easy. Now there's pros and cons to keeping a long-term tenant in there and below market rent. So that's something for you to discuss, but I highly recommend everyone come in here and do a full rent study to see what the current market rents are. Because if we are analyzing, if we're gonna keep the property, we have to get up to current market rents, see how it's performing. So my two favorite ways for getting rental estimates is first talking to my property manager, because they usually have the best information for rents. Now, if you don't have a property manager or you want to do more research on, go online and do a rent study. I'm also a big fan of the Bigger Pockets rental estimator. You can go to biggerpockets.com and pull up the rent estimator, put in the address, and they'll give you an estimated rent report back for what that property should be producing. In this case right here, the investor is hoping to get about $2,600 a month in rent. But just based on location, it's near a major thoroughfare, he was unable to hit that. So what he could get for this property is $2,365 a month in rent. So I'm gonna update it from $2,150 to $2,365. 
Now let's see what this does to the property's performance. So you can see on here, our return equity jumped up from about 10% to about 11.3%. And our cash flow jumped up from about $107 to about $265. So that's great to see that rent increase. Now, the last thing to focus on this rent increase is what will it take for you to go out there and update the property? A lot of times it's, you know, basic turnover cost of a couple thousand dollars. Sometimes it's a 20 or $30,000 remodel. So make sure you take into scope what it'll take to get it up to market rent. Okay, there's a lot more numbers we can go onto this property if I hit the highlights that I like to cover when I analyze my own rental properties. Now, the other thing to look at, and this doesn't show up in the software is, what is your sentiment towards a property? How do you feel about the property? What's the outlook of the neighborhood for the next couple of years? And this is stuff that you have to ask yourself based on how you're managing it, the condition of the property, the location, and the headache factor you have as well. Sometimes numbers are really good, but the headache factor is a lot higher and it's not worth it for the investor. So make sure you also take in that soft analysis as well as what you should be doing with the property. Now, my favorite question I like to ask myself and my investors is, all right, all these numbers aside, knowing what you know now, would you buy this property again today at today's numbers? Now ask yourself that and have an honest conversation with yourself because a lot of times that brings out different emotions that you can use to help analyze the property. All right, so let's jump into our second scenario of should we do a cash out refinance and pull money on our property to go reinvest another rental property? Now I look at loan to value first on here, loan to value or LTV. Now this property is at a 61% loan to value. So I personally like to target about a 65 to 70% loan to value in my portfolio. So that's the green light for me in terms of having like good leverage, help maximize returns, but not be over leveraged. Now, if it's between like 50 and 65%, that's the yellow light for me. Below 50% gets more into the red light, meaning, hey, if I'm in growth mode, I usually want more leverage to go out there and maximize those returns. So this is a 61% LTV. We will run the scenario, but since it's on the higher side there, I can already tell you this scenario won't produce any great numbers. Aside from having a higher LTV, what's the other thing we have? High interest rates. Uh, so if we do a cash out refinance, we're gonna get a loan at 8% on this property. We'll buy a new property, and then we're gonna have to keep a 35% down payment in both properties. All right, so let's compare the two properties here, two scenarios. The right side is the current one of keeping it. The left side is refinancing and buying a new property. So let's look at return equity. It's going from 11.3% down to 5%. That's the wrong direction. The other area I like to look at is what's the cash flow? We're going from a positive $3,200 a year to a negative $6,200 a year. Well, that's what happens when you're giving up 3.25% debt and buying 8% debt. So I don't think we need to go into any more numbers on here because I'll agree, this is not an attractive scenario. All right, so let's jump into scenario number three of selling the property and moving the proceeds somewhere else. Now, when most people look at selling the property, they are thinking, I'm gonna do a 1031 exchange which is a very powerful way to minimize and defer your taxes so you can go out there and put more money into the new investment. Even if you're thinking about doing 1031, make sure you go out there and understand your tax situation first. Why? Well, I've seen a lot of people get into bad situations in 1031 and get a very nasty tax bill. Always know what your downside is. Now, in this case for this investor, if he sold this and didn't do a 1031 exchange, his CP estimates his taxes will be between 85 to $89,000. Why so high? Well, he bought for $89,000 and selling it for $400,000. Well, if he has $155,000 in equity on the property, and let's subtract out a couple bucks for commissions and transaction costs, and he walks with $130,000, if $85,000 is going to taxes, that's a very big chunk of it. Well, it's eating up a lot because he bought it low, selling high, and he also has a very high LTV on the property as well. So let's run the scenario of 1031 exchanging this property. And we're gonna assume an 8% interest rate. 
He's gonna buy another rental here in Denver for about 5.5 cap rate, and we're assuming a 35% down payment. All right, so let's compare the two. So the right-hand side, again, is their baseline. This is the property as is with the increased rents. Now the 1031 exchange is we sell this and we buy a new property. The return equity is going from 11.3% to 8.6%. Again, wrong direction. And cash flow is going from about 3,200 to about negative $1,000 a year. So not attractive options. And it's not attractive because of the high interest rates and also because this property still has a very high loan to value. So there's less equity to pull out and go leverage up. All right, well, now that we ran all three scenarios, let's compare them. So I'm gonna compare the keep it with the increased rents next to the cash out refinance, next to the sell and 1031 trade up option. Now there's a lot of stuff you can go in here and dig into, but we'll do a quick comparison. <clears throat> now the return equity, which one's the highest? Well, it's the keep it. Which scenario has the best cash flow? Keep it. So for this investor, he's gonna keep the property, which I totally agree with it. But this is the power of running these models and using a piece of software like Property Llama. Go out there and run the models. Go out there and run the scenarios. Because while I was keeping this one, he sold some other ones. So even if you already know what the numbers will be, this is a good exercise so you can develop the habit of analyzing your properties on an annual basis. So hopefully this video has stressed the importance of doing an annual portfolio review and also giving you the framework and the tools so you can go out there and do it yourself. But here's my question for YouTube. If this was your rental property, which would you do? Would you number one, keep it? Number two, refi? Or number three, sell it? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you have any questions on here or want your property featured on a future Bigger Pockets video, come send me a direct message. I would love to connect.